everybody. I'm BJ Flagg. And I'm Rich G, and this is episode 330, How to Set Quotas that Drive Sales. As you know, (laughs) the first prize is the Cadillac Eldorado. Anyone want to see the second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you're fired. Oh, and you know what this is from. A, B, C. Always be closing. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. It was the best 1990s film by Alec Baldwin. I saw it on the other day, and when I knew we were doing quotas, boom, we're doing it. Yeah, the, and the issue is, is that we really look at sales a little bit differently a 32 little years bit later. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are all going to focus today on understanding quotas and how they align with your business needs. Data drives sales teams now. Data. So let's see how that goes, right, Rich? Yeah, so let's dive into what drives or what's going to drive your sales team in 2024. Okay. The first thing I want you to think of is what are quotas? A lot of people, you know, always ask me, what do you mean quota? What do you what are you talking about there? Um, you know, and how do they motivate your team? A sales quota is really just a performance expectation your sales team must achieve during a set period of time to earn their target incentive pay. They are paid most likely by commission all or some, and it's important for them to know. Um, And then they're all tied. Every one of those quotas is tied to a certain 2024 sales uh, goal and objective the stakeholders agreed on and confirmed in the fourth quarter. So that's the bar that they need to get to. Yeah, BJ, you're absolutely right. You're setting these goals and objectives in 2023, at the end of 2023, for 2024. And a lot of businesses don't set goals. They don't set objectives. And so their salespeople are just running around like chickens without their heads. They're just, there is no goal. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it's just funny that it's scary how there are a lot of companies that don't set those quotas. Right, right, for sure. And what's the good action step? The action for this tip is each team member should have a clear number that they must always focus on. That's their target. And that leads us into tip number two, which is how do quotas motivate your team? And that's the uh, one of the big things we're going to talk about today is motivating your team to hit that quota. Because quotas will increase your sales team's motivation. They're a like that magical uh, can of monster energy drink that all of your people get. Anytime someone has a target that they can see in the distance, far away in the distance, it makes it easier to incrementally get there and also see your progress along the way and then ultimately hit that bullseye of the target. Yeah. So each part of the team may have parameters such as a territory or a division or the size of accounts. So they have some kind of boundary that they have to work in. And they all need to be aware of who handles what. And they help each other with referrals that are more suited to another sales team member. So if I, I get a connection that's in someone else's territory it's incumbent upon me to introduce that person to my other salesperson because we're all helping each other. Okay. And that motivates your team too. And you'll see how these mini competitions and smaller incentives will rally your troops and try to have consistent amount of these to keep everybody on their toes. Um, I remember when we were doing sales and, um, there were always a lot of sample items in the house. And one of the managers would put up the sample item and say, 50 phone calls and you're going to win this. And I am telling you, it didn't take much. I would do it, totally do it. And we had the highest percentage of PR placements because we had incentive to get that to happen. Awesome. 
Um, one great action for this is to create a list of motivators that have worked in the past and some that are new so that they could be tied to maybe specific seasonal sales or uh, products. This is ideal throughout the year to sprinkle them through and keep your troops so motivated. So let me take you into number three. Frequent check-ins are key. Um, know that the sales manager needs to be up to date with how everybody is doing. You got to nip a concern in the bud. Help a new salesperson, maybe get a mentor, and keep an eye on the numbers. The team members need to be able to uh, be aware of their own progress, just as you do, but they should be able to, like, on a minute, choop, be able to say where they are. Um, make a weekly check-in uh, thing, and you will get to where you need to be by the end of the month. Make that last week count. Am I right, Rich? The last Absolutely. week is the most important. <laughs> exactly. Well, frequent check-ins are very important, especially by the sales manager, because people might be hitting obstacles. They might be getting demotivated. They might be having pr a problem with a prospect or they're just darn lost. And yeah. so having these frequent check-ins uh, gives you the opportunity to track and monitor all your people to make sure they're all focused on that last week. Yeah, and if you if you can imagine, if sometime during the month, someone referred a person over to another division, you point that out, point it out yeah. every single time it happens because people will start to get it. Oh, he's getting kudos because he's doing that. I will do that. So it's big deals. Yeah. So our action for this tip is share the team's progress, their wins, their losses with everybody on the sales team, like BJ said, all the time. Seasoned professionals should mentor younger salespeople and encourage them to reach further with their efforts. It's again, it's a team effort. You're all working together. You know, when the sea rises, all ships rise. So you all work together on this. Absolutely. So tip number four. Tip four is think macro and micro, seasonal and monthly quota changes. So as you're as being the sales manager, your job is to keep an eye on the big picture and know what's coming down the pike. Has there been a change in a product or a service? How does that change your goals and objectives? Remember, everything is fluid and you need to make the these little macro and micro changes that will keep your sales team quotas relevant and on track. Seasonal objectives also need to be thought of based upon the production cycle and trade shows that you might be going to, sales team pushes, just to name a, a few influences. And this is where data becomes your friend, okay? And you can look back historically and make adjustments and additions when needed, especially with seasonal things or if you're hitting a trade show, you know you could plan all of these out oh, yeah. the year before and, oh, yeah. and understand where all these big things are going to happen. And you know who was there and you know what they yeah. bought from you and you know who you want to have a small breakfast with. Who do you want to put a lunch together for? It is imperative that you watch those data, watch the data. And it's almost like you need to get your sales force addicted to the data too, and realize how much it's going to help them in their sales mode. For the action, each month prior to the next month, make your team adjustments and additions so that all the quotas are adjusted. What you're trying to do there is you're not trying to like um, do anything underhanded with the sales team. What you're doing is becoming more precise. Your sales team actually will thank you for doing this. It's really yeah, important. And, and and BJ, uh, another thing that I just remembered is, you know, uh, the marketing team might come out with a new product or a new right. service or a new thing, and you need to fit that in. You might need to adjust quotas because we've got a new product. And I'll be honest, whenever you have a new product or service, salespeople are attracted to it like flies to a, a lamb. They just, things. oh, I want to sell it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. shiny objects. 
And so what you want to do is you need to integrate that in. So there will be changes during the year. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I think you could benefit from it, right? You could really benefit yes. from uh, making those changes. So number five is be proactive about any sales team concerns. That's, we mentioned it earlier in the podcast. We're bringing it up again. Be the sales manager who knows his their team and always works swiftly. One issue that comes up that uh, where there's a, some sales team members who don't react well to sales quotas, you know, they're, they're trying to run the show a little bit, um, but they always feel that it cheapens what they do for the company. They'd rather be paid a set amount and not have be part of the sales quota team. What they are called are account executives, and you need to have them bring them in, be very careful with these people. You need to bring them in, have a discussion and say, this is now what you're going to make. And let me tell you, they'll come in on Monday and they'll be a sales professional. Don't you worry about it. Um, if you need to make your team, um, you know, hungry and happy, but you don't need to make be accountable for everything they want to do. They need to be accountable, have accountability for what they bring it. You know, since the dawn of time, this concern has been there. Once an account comes, is coming in-house, you as the sales manor, manager need to decide if that client will be assigned to an account representative or if it and if it's taken out of the sales team's responsibility, that's a little bit of a shift, right? And some companies feel there is so much inner sales growth in an account and will actively keep a sales team involved. They will have a look, you know, a larger account. They'll they'll have a look on that account and always be telling the accounting representative, I'm stepping in for a minute, things like that. Um you know, this is needs to be a very clear distinction from the very get go, right, Rich? Yeah, there. I I kind of uh, term it hunters and gatherers. You've got yes. hunters that are going out and getting new business, and once they get the new business and they get the commission, the 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 uh, client comes in house to inside sales, and the gatherers work with that client, and and maybe the the hunter still gets a smaller percentage, but they're not spending a lot of time hanging around. Maybe if, if something happens with the client, the salesperson goes back in to warm them up a little bit. But for all intents and purposes, you have hunters that are constantly going out and getting new business and getting the commission. And then the gatherers, the inside sales that keep them fat and happy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What's so a good action? action? is to make sure your whole team knows the account status. Also make it clear that they could voice your, their thoughts about a specific account and how it may have changed that month. So that's so important with this. Yeah, sometimes, so, the, yeah, sometimes the sales team are very like buttoned up, you know, like they don't want to tell you that their, their key con person left the company, you know, they get all nervous about telling, no, Make sure they tell you. Yeah. Well, number six, our sixth tip and last one is <laughs> the three E's. We have the three E's, which is educate, elevate, and earn, which is the, your sales team is a different breed of people from everybody else in your company. Oh, yeah. You need to educate them on the industry, on the company, and what's coming down the pike that they can get excited about. Because most of the time they're out hunting. OK, so they're not in the office a lot. So you need to make sure they need their they know what's going on. Uh, so you need to elevate your sales members in the team each month who are producing, who's meeting their quota and making progress into new sales channels, because there's this natural affinity for salespeople just to go out and be in their own little cocoon. And you need to bring them back as a sales manager to show them who's doing what, who did something kind of cool, because they need to earn not only money, but respect from their fellow team members. Let That's these fair. people speak about what worked and what they're looking forward to next month and match them with someone who is new, 
or maybe needs a little motivation, a little fire under their butt <laughs> for the next month. Okay. Seasonal standouts need to be kept in mind as you prepare for the following month. Highlight a team or a team member that went over and above last year so they can prep and do it again and again and again. Yeah. You know, we, we love it because we have um, certain team members that are part of, have a certain division. And one of them is preschools. And you might think that's crazy, but they're extremely lucrative. And they get so excited, but that's only seasonal. It's twice a year that they get, go back in, swoop in and, and do what they need to do. So for other parts of the year, they work on many other different accounts. And it is amazing that those seasonal standouts just are like phenomenal. <laughs> you, you love them. Um, and that's really brings up the idea of just like creating these mini teams that determine new needs for the coming month. And don't do the same old, same old. Mix it up and, and keep everybody fresh and focused on their numbers. You know, switch the teams, make the teams different each month. And they'll get so excited. Oh, I'm working with Sally this month. Oh, this is going to be fun. And it, and it really creates a good bond for sure. Sales quotas are a great tool to keep your team focused and rewarded. We'd like to invite you to share your sales team stories and quota progress on social media with our hashtag, the best small business show. Be awesome to see what you've got up your sleeve. I want to thank you for tuning in to the best small business show. If this episode has been valuable to you, subscribe and share it with other budding entrepreneurs who could benefit from it. And that's it for this week. You can reach out to me at richg.com and find BJ at newrenew.com. Thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo. Have an unbelievable week and catch you later.